Hey there and welcome to the second installment of our installing Authank PAX server. So just to remind you, we're going to install our own personal packs, and this is done from the point of view of a radiologist rather than a software engineer. So in this episode, I told you we're going to cover how to get a virtual private server and set one of those um, up. So DigitalOcean is my suggested provider if you're new to all this. Um, other good providers, Linode, RackNerd, there are many. But um, let's go with DigitalOcean for this uh, demonstration. So I've logged into my account and you can see I don't have any droplets. A droplet is what they call a little server. So we're going to click create droplet and choose Ubuntu. We are able to pick which version of Ubuntu and what I would say is you don't want one that's too new because Authank may not have been um, updated to work on that yet. So I'm going to stick with this version 20.04 LTS, which means it's from 2020 and LTS means long term support, as in it's one that they're going to do patches for for a good while. Next, we're going to move down and we'll stick with a basic shared CPU. And down in this section, I'm going to say a regular SSD so that it's the cheapest $5 a month droplet. Okay, so $5 a month for a pack server with one gig of RAM, 25 gigs of drive. That's not too bad. You might find if you're using this for something more serious, then that's not going to be anywhere near enough storage, but that's a problem for later. Now, when you pick your data center region, generally you want to go for something which is close to you. So I'm going to go for this one in London because I'm in the UK. And I am just going to choose a root password, although it is much better practice to use these SSH keys. But if you don't know what they are, then just stick with the password and pick a nice secure one. So I will not pick one that's that secure for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, but something that I can remember easily. Uh, all thank packs we'll go for. Okay, so it needs to be eight characters long. It needs uppercase letter, that's fine. And we haven't got a number. Okay, so all, all thank packs 2022. Cannot end in a number or a special character. Let's start in it then. 2022 or thank packs. And I'll just copy that. Please do use a better password than I have. All right, I think we're good to go. We click create droplet and it will churn away. And I can click on that right away. So as you can see, it does take a little while to spin away and make you your virtual private server. And when it's done, it's going to send you some credentials which you can use to log into it. Okay, Droplet has been created. That means that it's ready to go. That was quite fast, wasn't it? Bear in mind, we were watching that real time. So now what we're going to need to do is connect to it. So there is a really simple way to connect to it by just clicking console. And all right, it's asking us to install the console agent. Yeah, so it's saying that you need to do some mods before you can do that. What that actually lets you do is it lets you use a console in the browser to connect your droplet. but. Let's not do that because I want to show you a much more robust way. So you're going to need to make a note of the IP address, which is this part here, because that is necessary to connect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the terminal application. I'm using OSX. It's called terminal.app or the equivalent in whatever system you are on. So I have that here in the background. And what we're now going to use is a way to remotely connect to that server which we've just created. 
So we're going to type the command ssh root at and now we really need that IP address. So let's go back to here, copy this, and we'll put that after the terminal. So it's saying with a root user with that IP address. And we've never connected to this before, so it's going to ask if we will accept this special key to approve the server. So I'll say yes. And now it's asking for the password, and that's the one that we created. So I'm just going to type that in and hit enter, and we will be logged in to our new remote server. So, like magic, we are now looking at the command prompt on the server which we have just set up and purchased. Let's type ls, which is list command. Let's go to the root directory. So, there are all the folders on the server. Now the very first thing that you should do is update your server. So we're going to do that by typing sudo apt update. Sudo means super user do. That's going to churn away downloading the latest updates for this server and it's just good practice to have it ready like that. Now the next thing we're going to do is go sudo apt upgrade and this one may take a bit longer and it will prompt you um, to install things that take up extra disk space there is actually a command line key which you can pass a parameter you can pass that command where it will not prompt you every time it will just say yes which is quite convenient but let's just do it this way for now so as you can see, it's just really retrieving and installing a ton of packages. It's upgrading our whole operating system. Now when it's done this, we're going to work on installing some of the things which Authank needs. So let's just go back to the uh, Authentic website while we're doing that. So we're going to use this version, Authentic for Ubuntu, and you'll notice here that there is a version for, it's going to make that a bit bigger, for the 20.04 LTS version, which is what we have put on our server. So we'll pick that version. This is just a real like big list of everything that's in the package. Okay, let's go and see how that installation's doing. 99%, nearly done. All right, so that's done, and now we're ready to put all thank on here. So we're gonna use the command sudo apt install this time, and that allows you to install packages. sudo apt install. Uh, just need to check what... I think it's just all thank, but let's just see. Sorry, wrong one, Ubuntu. I don't find this very easy to find out what's going on. Um, so we have a number of different packages. The basic one is Authank, and then we have all these other ones. So I guess we need to do all of these. Okay, that's a fair old list. So 
So what I've actually done here is just jump to the Orthanc book. This is an amazing resource. It's an online manual that shows you everything to do with Orthanc. And if you go to the section in the book about Orthanc packages for Debian slash Ubuntu, it conveniently has a list of all of the packages that we need to install. So I'm actually going to copy these commands and paste them in and it'll make life a bit easier. Okay, so I've pasted in just the ones that I need. Um, you could just put them all in, but I know for a fact that I don't need some of these packages for what I'm doing. So I've gone for these ones. I'm gonna hit enter and, oh, that's great. It's missing one of them. Uh, GDCM, which is ironic because that is straight from Orthanc's own website. Okay, I don't really know what that package does. Let's just get rid of it, see if it works without it. So again, it's prompting us, do we want to use disk space for these packages? Yes. And off it goes again. I've just come back over to the website while it's doing its uh, install, because once it's in there, we're going to have to curb our excitement and see if we can actually run the thing. And so starting and stopping the service is what we want to do next. So we've got these commands, sudo service or thanks start, stop and restart. So we'll give that a whirl as soon as it's installed. All right, looks like it's done. So let's give that a go. So sudo service start or thank. Uh, I think I got that the wrong way around or thank start. Not a very gratifying thing, but apparently that started the Orthanc service. Now what I know about Orthanc is that it runs on a predictable port, which is port 8042. 8042. And I'll show you what that means in a web browser. Um, so let's go back over to here. Back to our droplet again and just copy the IP address. Interestingly, you can see the spikes of traffic since it was created and that's us installing all those packages. Right, let's just go to a new uh, browser tab and just type in the address and it should do nothing. Um, however, if we attempt to connect to port 8042, boom, we're presented with a password request and that's because Orthanc's server is running and it's trying to allow us to log in um, to the packs. Brilliant, it's working. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap that up in this episode, um, but we'll come back next time and show you how to you know, basically get beyond this point and configure it so that you can see your shiny new packs. See you again soon.